We are here at SolidWorks World 2018, and behind me is the Matter Hackers booth. Big thanks to Matter Hackers for bringing me down. I'm not a SolidWorks user, I'm not an engineer. Let's talk to Matter Hackers about how 3D printing can benefit the SolidWorks user, the engineer, the people that are designing parts for production. What's happening? I'm Dave from Matter Hackers. We are really excited to be here at SolidWorks World. I've been here for almost eight or nine years, just personally coming to SolidWorks World. That is how I got into 3D printing. I have a mechanical and engineering background, so I was designing using SolidWorks and other CAD programs. The reason SolidWorks World is great for 3D printing is because you've got the experience of using CAD to create digital designs, and now with 3D printers, you can generate those, make them into physical objects. There are many shows we go to where there's a barrier of entry, kind of where people are trying to understand how do I make those 3D parts. We got a lot of engineers here, so we're speaking their language and being able to digitally create those and then physically turn them into goodies. At the show we're showing here, kind of what we're trying to describe is an engineer's desk should have a 3D printer on it. It allows you to iterate, prototype, just be way more productive if you don't have to wait for outsourced 3D printed parts, which can take days, or maybe even CNC milled parts, which can take weeks if you're waiting in some machine shop. And the closer it is to the engineer actually working, the more productive you can be. We also have another space, which is a bit of a workshop. So you imagine this being almost at home in your workshop or some maker space. We got the BCN SIG Max, which is really awesome. It has duplication mode, which we're showing right now. You can also mirror it, so it's polar opposite of that. Uh, really great capabilities, dual extrusion with the independent heads, which is really awesome. Lastly, we got the Pulse, which is just a really good entry printer if you're looking for anything. This particular one is set up to print Nylon X, our carbon fiber infused nylon material. Engineers love that, it's super strong. It's what I use mostly, print surfboard fins, bicycle parts, stuff like that. Really actual physically usable parts printed with carbon fiber nylon are the best. So these are just a couple of the things that we're showing and we're excited to be here at SolidWorks kind of introducing more people into desktop 3D printing and how you can use it in a day-to-day -day process, whether you're doing engineering or you're at home, making awesome stuff using 3D printing. The RAISE 3D N2 Plus is a wonderful machine, one that I continue to use on the channel. I'm not an engineer though, I'm not a SolidWorks user, so let's find out from RAISE 3D what their machines can do for the engineer and what their machines can do for the SolidWorks user. Hi, I'm Michael RAISE 3D. I'm uh, one of the lead techs here in the Costa Mesa office, and I'm here with Joel to uh, talk about the products. So when it comes to SOLIDWORKS users, uh, they'll look for a few key things, one of which being the full build volume, uh, a variety of materials they can use, so uh, higher temperature materials, ABS, polycarbonate, uh, nylons, and a third major point is the price. Um, with a printer with a volume of a 12 by 12 by let's say the 24 for the N2 Plus, the price is only $38.99, so it's less than the seat of SOLIDWORKS itself. Um, for an N2, you know, for 12 by 12 by uh, 12, you're looking at uh, roughly $28.99, so about $1,000 less. And it comes with dual extrusion too, and fully heated build plate at 110 Celsius. So it supports almost anything you can print uh, in the normal FDM market. We just released our information on the filament out sensor and the, uh, and the camera system. Those will be released fairly soon. They should be released in March, I believe. They are up for uh, pre-order, so on your larger prints, if you're using one kilogram spools, you're not going to lose your prints if they run out overnight or run while you're away and your back is turned, you know, like some people do. And the camera system, obviously, to monitor the printers and even run time-lapse videos of them. So you don't have to set up a little GoPro on the side and then attach it somewhere. SolidWorks users are notorious for creating incredibly complex models that scale to any size. So what do you do when you're a SolidWorks user, you want to create a really large model and you want to bring it to life? Well, you talk to these guys at 3D Platform. My name is Mark Hubner. I'm the Market Development Manager with 3D Platform. I work with a lot of different engineers and people that see it on screen and they can show it and turn it 360 and all those things, but they can't portray it hands-on to somebody. They want to take that idea and visualize it and put it in somebody's hands. I've uh, worked with people that are doing video and they want to take and create the character and put it in somebody's hands or maybe it's a mechanical assembly or something and they want to be able to show how the parts all work together. And we're able to do that by 3D printing and bringing it to life uh, in full scale. Uh, 
Uh, a lot of times when you have a small desktop printer, you're printing things and you have to scale it down and, and show a small piece or you glue a lot of pieces together. Uh, our printer, we have platforms that go up to a meter by meter and a half by 0.7 on the Z. So you can do things like a full-size gas tank for a motorcycle, right? So instead of piecing this together or scaling it down, you get the full size right there. Uh, things like this where, you know, somebody designing a hopper. You know, this on a small desktop, you're probably looking at uh, anywhere between a dozen to 15 parts, having to glue them together to put it in. This was printed all in one piece. And uh, that's really our biggest advantage, is being able to do things in life-size scale. And uh, we do that with an open source platform, so all kinds of materials, you're talking PLA, PETG, nylons, all kinds of stuff. And it allows a guy that's, you know, the designer behind the screen, brings it to life. As you know, I'm very familiar with FDM 3D printing in plastic, but what if you need something a little more resilient, a little more robust, a little more metal? You turn to the folks at Desktop Metal and you print yourself some incredible, incredible parts. Hey everyone, uh, my name is Arjun Agarwal. I'm VP of Business Development at Desktop Metal. Uh, Desktop Metal is a metal 3D printing company. We were founded a couple of years ago in 2015. And, and the goal really was to make metal 3D printing accessible to everyone. If you looked at the landscape a couple years ago, metal 3D printing was super expensive. It required dedicated rooms, operators, and facilities, uh, involved toxic chemicals and gases. And, and our goal was really to bring metal 3D printing to the masses. So the way that we've done that uh, is designing two systems, one of which you see here. This is our studio system, and it's the first ever office-friendly metal 3D printer. Hi, I'm Mike Kelly. I'm a, the lead design engineer for a desktop metal studio printer that we have here. The technology is based on metal injection molding, also known as MIM, where you take a metal powder and you mix that with a plastic binder. You then put, take the binder and you put that into rod form. We take these rods and we load them into the cartridge. The cartridge will then dispense the rods similar to a straw dispenser with this roller in the back. The rod then drops into a, a flipper mechanism which lifts the rod vertically so that it can be dropped into the extruder. It extrudes a lot like a glue stick would where you're pushing on the rod and trying to get it to come out the end, very similar to normal FDM plastic printers. So we print the part and we use a ceramic support material. The ceramic is used to prevent the part from sintering together during the sintering process. So we take the part and we then have to debind it. We have to remove the plastic and the wax from it. So we take that part and we put it in the solvent bath and then that creates the brown part. So the brown part then gets put into the furnace. The furnace then vaporizes the remainder of the plastic and then you're left with only metal at that point. You continue to heat the part until it gets to the sintering temperature and you hold it there. Once it's sintered, it takes about 12 to 24 hours, you're left with a part that's nearly fully dense, about 96 to 99.8% dense. And at the end of it, you just have to take the part out and break it. What you can see behind me here is our new software tool Live Parts. Live Parts is the first product being released by DM Labs, our advanced R&D group within Desktop Metal. And really the goal here is to give the power to the designer to create parts designed and well suited for 3D printing. All designers have to do is define constraints within SolidWorks and we have Live Parts which will take those constraints and dynamically grow a part from individual seed cells in a multi-physics environment that fully allows the part to adapt to different environmental forces as well as changing mechanical loads. The result, as you can see here, is a part that's geometrically complex, lightweight, and evenly stressed, well suited to 3D printing. And we're super excited about this because it's integrated with SolidWorks, it fits right within your design workflow, and it's gonna really allow designers to take advantage of all that 3D printing has to offer. So those are a couple of things that, that we're excited about and working on at Desktop Metal. Uh, we hope that you guys will check out our website, desktopmetal.com, for more information and to learn more. Thanks, everyone. 3D printing is awesome, additive manufacturing is awesome, but what if you have material and you need to take it away? That's when you come to someone like Tormach and you get yourself a personal CNC. I'm Chris Fox and I'm from Tormach and here we're showing off our PCNC 440, that's personal CNC. 
a machine like this benefits a SOLIDWORKS user because it's extremely approachable. It gives you the full operation of a three-axis CNC machine. It can cut anything that a much larger machine can cut, but it'll fit in your garage. It'll fit in a small space, and it runs on standard power. So it gives you access to, to something that's used to be in an industrial environment, and now you can bring it home. So when you're using SOLIDWORKS CAD, um, you're, you're designing a model, and, and what happens is, you know, so many people are used to 3D printers where you can just take a file that comes right out of a CAD program and you can drop it into like a slicer and put it into a 3D printer. This is a bit different, but now SOLIDWORKS has their CAM program, which is Computer Aided Manufacturing. So those CAM programs actually create tool paths that allow you to cut metal. And so what happened here is, just like 3D printing, you're using G-code to develop your part but instead of adding material, you're taking material away. So when you're taking material away, you have different finishes and different surfaces, and especially when you're dealing in metal, you're dealing with a much harder material that's a little more finicky, so you require specific, unique uh, cutters to get different surface finishes and different uh, features on that part. So today at SolidWorks World, what we're making are aluminum fidget spinner, bottle opener, USB drives, because, you know, why not? We can. Um, so. Basically, what this does is it provides you the opportunity to start making not just plastic parts, but anything you want in your house. And, and we, we really seeing a lot of people really get excited about this open access because really you have a home manufacturing center. So that's it. Thanks for stopping by and uh, happy, uh, happy SolidWorks, I guess. <laughs> what if you're a SolidWorks user creating a massive model and you want to somehow make it real by using German engineering, that's when you come to Big Rep. Hey, I'm Steve Rizzo from Big Rep. Big Rep benefits the SOLIDWORKS user because designers hate having to split up parts into multiple pieces and multiple assemblies and multiple prints. Now with the Big Rep, you're able to print all of these pieces in one run, one large print, and you're not sacrificing resolution. So this is actually a UAV wing that we're printing. We're showing off the different types of support structures you can print with 3D printing. As you can see, this is printed with our 0.6 nozzle at a 0.15 millimeter layer height. So you can see even with large prints, you're not sacrificing resolution. So this is the Big Rep Studio. This is our newest printer. It was released the end of last year. Uh, built and designed and manufactured in Germany. It's heated bed, dual extruder, multi-material, multi-color. It has a large build envelope of 39 and a half inches by 20 inches by 20 inches. It is designed to print very large parts with high resolution. Uh, we are trying to be your smart solution for your big ideas. Check out our website at www.bigrep.com. All right, SolidWorks World is over. Man, that was a lot of fun. We got to see desktop metal. We got to see 3D platform. We got to see Big Rep. We saw Tormac. We talked to Raise3D. Shoot, we even spoke with Matter Hackers. Big thanks to Matter Hackers for bringing me down. That's it. We're done. Thanks for watching. Love you all. I'm going to throw you a big high five. Solid works. It looks to be, or no, shoot. I forgot world. I gotta say world. Okay, here we go. <clears throat>